We love the Bronx. Who would think? Who would think? I'm thrilled to be back in the city I grew up in, the city that we all love, New York City. Donald Trump campaigning in the Bronx. It was quite a sight, given that the famous New York borough is a Democrat stronghold, and most of its residents are either black or Hispanic, people who tend to vote Democrat. Well, Trump's rally went quite well by most accounts as he became the first Republican presidential candidate to visit the area since Ronald Reagan in 1980. That's over 40 years ago. Reagan went on to win the election. Will Trump do the same? We'll ask our panel in just a moment. But first, let's hear from Trump and the good people of the Bronx. Hello to all of the incredible, tough, strong, hard-working American patriots right here in the Bronx. Who would think? Who would think? What a crowd. This is something. The event was held in Cretona Park in the South Bronx. The Bronx. One of the most deeply blue counties in the nation. This latest move is an effort to appeal to black and Latino voters in one of New York City's most diverse neighborhoods. A Republican president has not won New York since President Reagan. What it means for Trump to be in the Bronx, man, it means it feels like a political shift. It doesn't matter whether you're black or brown or white or whatever the hell color you are, it doesn't matter. We are all Americans and we're gonna pull together as Americans. Donald Trump to be the ringleader of a, and invite all his clowns to a place like the Bronx. New York will never, ever support Donald Trump. Kathy Hoku, like, just look at the crowd, right? So when she says clowns, yeah. Yeah. You're talking to me, you're talking to a whole yeah. bunch of people that just want to listen. You know, for my lifetime, this is actually the first time that a uh, president that I know has actually came to the hood. I'm a Bronx resident, and actually, I was a Democrat, but actually, I'm supporting Trump. Trump doesn't get to come to the Bronx and pretend that he represents anything that we stand for. I want to know, who are these Bronx people? I was looking at that crowd going, these people are not from the Bronx. Like, OK, maybe some, but most of them are from somewhere else. He's not going to win New York. He's not going to win uh, the Bronx. What he's trying to do is to signal to other people, signal to people in swing states who are yeah. white, who don't want to be thought of as voting for racist. He's not racist at all, not even a piece. Who's telling you that? Is it just the media? He was in there four years already. What did he do for us? Absolutely nothing. Donald Trump came to the South Bronx today to speak to some supporters and to a fair amount of empty space in Cortona Park. The pictures of the crowd are all fake. It doesn't mean anything. Hmm, really? Well, maybe you should talk to the people who actually went to the event because they've been all over television telling everybody, wow, this was life changing. I honestly think Trump is gonna win this by a long shot. By a long shot. One of the things that I found was that there were a lot of people here that were actually from the Bronx. I was a lifelong Democrat. I voted Democrat. You, you're Puerto Rican, you know, you're Spanish, you live in the hood, you're supposed to vote Democrat. But once you start waking up to, you know, the biggest mistake they did was mess with Trump because that woke up a lot of people. A lot of the people I talked to were first-time voters. Some had never been to a Trump event before. Some had voted for Obama twice and voted for Biden and are now uh, saying they are going to vote for former President Trump. Oh, I voted for Biden, but I regret it. We had the, the greatest economy in history. Everybody had the best they've ever had. African-American jobs were the best in history. Asian-American, the best in history. Hispanic, the best in history. Millions and millions of people that are coming into our country, the biggest impact and the biggest negative impact is against our black population and our Hispanic population. Joe Biden is not getting the job done for the Bronx. None of those rich people in suits would ever step foot in there. Donald Trump did, and we have his ear. We love the Bronx. This is like a love fest, love fest, it's a love fest. We love you. Okay, let's bring in our panel now, and today we're joined by John Eaves, a political commentator and former Democratic candidate for Georgia's Secretary of State. We also have Terrace Todd, a Republican congressional candidate in Virginia. And finally, we have Mark Fisher, the founder of Black Lives Matter in Rhode Island. Welcome to all of you. So, John Eaves, we were just talking before the program began, and you said seeing Trump in the Bronx was very painful for you. Why? 
because uh, it was a, a series of lies, uh, misconceptions, um, and it's about the optics. And so Donald Trump and his campaign team are doing, uh, making an effort to try to create the illusion that he is a proponent of Black Americans, that he uh, has an agenda that's going to support the plight of Black Americans in communities across the United States. And he went to a, a blue state, a heavily blue state, and also a blue uh, oasis within a blue state. And so uh, it's the appearance of support, appearance of, um, of um, interest, and it was to me, a consistent message, a consistent uh, strategy on his part uh, to create an illusion. It's all about the optics, and uh, I saw all through it. Terrace, and I, I don't, I don't buy it. Terrace John is saying he's insincere and he sees right through Trump. Wow, that's really unfortunate. Uh, I think, I think the blue uh, or the left sometimes gets a little nervous when conservatives, particularly. Uh, go into places that they believe they have a stronghold on. I think we, um, I think as Americans, I think we should be open to any former president coming to uh, our neighborhoods, our communities, regardless of who they are. Um, and that's just it. I think it was an absolute wonderful thing that he was there. I mean, he did the unthinkable. I think he did what people were not expecting him to do. And um, so I think it was a really good thing, you know, and it's really unfortunate. Um, that some would have rather that he stayed away. And my question would be, well, why not? Um, and some will say it's about optics. I mean, that's what politics are. Um, Joe Biden does the same thing. <laughs> uh, one thing that I can say about Trump, he's never told black people when they're black. Mark, what did the Bronx get out of the visit? They got a visit from a legend and um, they got to see Donald Trump um, up close and personal, do what he does, and that's try to unify. He's a unifier. Um, he's obviously out campaigning, and basically um, the persecution that he's facing is it's a huge boost for his campaign because, um, let's face it, uh, he's a target. He's made himself a target. He didn't have to do that necessarily. We know that he's already a billionaire, and uh, but he did it, and, you know, and sometimes I wonder, like, does... You know, most people don't have that kind of courage or integrity. He didn't have to do that, but he did it. And he, like he always says, you know, um, they're not, you know, coming for me. They're coming for you. I'm just in the way. Coming, so John? for him to do something like that to, you know, try to be the last, you know, um, defense of a complete breakdown to communism and fascism, you know, for the sake of all Americans, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's a highly commendable thing. John, he's a unifier in uh, Mark's words. Wow. He also mentioned integrity. That is uh, shocking. <laughs> this man is on trial in New York City today as we speak. And he also has, uh, you know, a lot of indictments against him because of his wrongdoings. And to me, he's a habitual liar. He's, discongen he's discongenuous. And it's not about the talk. It's about, it's about the walk. What has he done? Uh, this man was very divisive when he was president of the United States. He didn't unify anybody. He didn't really do anything for black people. He didn't do things for the cities of our country. Uh, so I, 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 I'm certainly outnumbered by these two uh, distinguished uh, brothers of mine, but uh, we certainly disagree. Our perception is incredibly different and opposite. And my view of Donald Trump, Trump and his record is... Uh, is not very complimentary. Terrace, uh, John there saying that he didn't do anything for African-Americans. Very sad. Uh, opportunity zones, um, a record number, of in, record number of funding to HBCUs. I currently sit on the foundation board of Norfolk State University. So uh, funding HBCUs, as a matter of fact, when they said he was very divisive, the fact that when I was appointed by the Trump administration, I was appointed to head up an Obama initiative. So this notion that somehow he got in and just kind of wiped everything out that Obama has done, you're looking at the person who actually headed up the executive director for White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for African Americans, which was an Obama initiative. And so uh, you're talking about um, criminal justice reform. I mean, you're talking about all these things, man, and nothing for black people. 
I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Um, but again, he had the courage to go to the Bronx and meet the people where they are, um, which they were totally unexpecting uh, for him to do so. And my brother was right. I mean, he didn't have to do that. Um, look at Chicago. Chicago's actually, people in Chicago, folks who look like me, are actually wanting him to come there uh, because of how they're being mishandled there by a black uh, black Democrat mayor. Okay, John. <laughs> who was actually doling out money for illegals to be in their community. So um, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, he's released people from prison. Kwame Kilpatrick, former mayor of Detroit, who I met with personally. He didn't have to do that, but he did that. And so we could call it office or whatever, but the fact is, is that he didn't have to do it, but he did it. Come in, John. Opportunity zones, that was a product of, pro of President Obama. I was in office as the chairman of Fulton County government in Atlanta, Georgia. And so this opportunity zone concept was really the creation of President Obama, not Trump. And in terms of HBCUs, Biden has appropriated more money to the black colleges and universities of the United States than any other president. In fact, he was at my alma mater, Morehouse College, a week and a half ago, speaking to 414 black male graduates and shared with him his, his record of increasing black wealth, his record of canceling uh, the loan obligations of many uh, young Americans, many of them are black Americans, as well as his record of a very diverse administration, the first ever black female to serve as vice president, the first ever black female to be a Supreme Court justice, hmm. the first black ever head of the defense department, Let's pose that the to Mark. First, I just want to get Mark's opinion. People. Mark, um, like Mark, Mark, John Eves, Mark, John Eves is, has, has quite a long list there of uh, appointees, black appointees, that have come out of the White House, and he's pointing that, to that as evidence that Joe Biden is not a racist, but that Trump is. Mark? All skin folk ain't kin folk. That's one thing that we all understand here. That's um, rule number one. <laughs> Can Kamala you explain, Harris can you explain that to our viewers? Folks. Can you explain what I you will. mean? I, I, absolutely. Well, it means that just because you're black don't mean you're for black people. Kamala Harris has broken the record for locking up black people in the state of California. Let True. that sink in. That means Kamala Harris has locked up more black men in the history of the state of California than any white man, any white woman, any black man, and any black woman, it doesn't matter. Red, green, yellow, she has the record. She's eclipsed That's it. That's true. So when you talk about, you know, I, you know, and with all due respect, I love how Democrats, they all are on code to their credit. They all have the same talking points. It's refute anything Donald Trump has done and point to what, um, how racist they are and how not racist the Democrats are. But I beg to differ because it's deflection. The reason why they always want to highlight how bad Trump is and how racist he is is because it is a deflection from how actually racist they are. The Democrat-ran cities in this country are complete war zones. Blue cities have failing education systems. They have poverty, record crime, immigration, that unprecedented illegal immigration. And, and, and they do nothing for black people except come around every four years and ask for our vote. And they do nothing in return. Let I can me... go through. I, I I can go through a list of black people who are absolutely um, antithetical to what black people want and need in this country, which is equity, which is diversity, which is inclusion. Because they're very comfortable with the status quo. They're very comfortable with white supremacy and the institutional racism in the systems that benefit white people because they benefit from it. They're not black leaders. Oh, um, let, let me pose that to John, if I may. People. If I may, John, the, the Democrat leaders you have right now, the, the black Democrat leaders that you have right now, are people who are, you know, vested in the current status quo, and they're not helping their own people. That's what, that's what Mark is saying there. Well, don't let me laugh and fall out of my chair. Um, you know, uh, that is a traditional uh, Republican view. Uh, the fact is, black politicians, most of whom are Democrat, are pushing for 
um, more equitable um, health care in our communities, more economic opportunities in our communities, the development of infrastructure in our communities. And so it's not talking points, it's not a, it's not a conversation, it's not an illusion that Republicans um, create in terms of what they can do for Black people. The fact is Democrats, many of whom who are Black elected officials, um, really promote an agenda that I think is having a positive effect in terms of job creation, in terms of econo economic um, development, wealth creation. John, just to challenge that well point, if I may, um, if that's the case, then why is it that uh, Trump is seeing his support amongst black voters increase so much? In 2016, 6% voted for him. In 2020, 8%. And right now, Trump is polling around 18% amongst uh, black American voters. Why is he seeing his support amongst uh, black Americans going up and up and up? I think that that is his Achilles heel uh, to a certain degree. Inflation is really a, a challenge in the United States, and it may be a problem in many other parts of the world, but you know, simple um, bread and potatoes type issues here in our country. Can I add something to that? Yeah. You know, I just want to say that it's not, it's, it's because to my brother, my Democrat brother, no disrespect, um, because Republicans are just as bad in my view. Uh, and, and that's my view, because I'm an independent, and I'm a staunch Trump supporter. And there's a reason why he has doubled, more than doubled his increase from 9% to 22% in the black community. It's because he offers things that no other politician has offered to the black community. He hears us like he hears all Americans in a way no politician has before. And so he resonates with us, his humanity and his realness and his authenticity. It's, it's, it, it doesn't have a color. It's colorless. And so people who feel that, who can relate to that, who understand that, are, are, are running to Donald Trump because he's something that we haven't seen in a long time. He's a phenomenon Mark, in politics. Mark, um, John, John mentioned earlier in the program that uh, Trump has no credibility because he's facing so many court cases, so many indictments. And in our report, we heard one person there saying that when they messed with Trump, that actually woke up a lot of voters, this idea of lawfare. Uh, what can you yep. say about that? I say it's absolutely correct because what happened is um, you're looking at the, the, the Biden regime, the Gestapo, um, you know, who basically is uh, weaponizing the Department of Justice uh, and to try to imprison all his political opponents. And he's almost uh, on the verge of trying to do the same thing to a former president of the United States. But that won't happen because there'll be so much unrest in this country and they know it that they'll never be able to do something like that, although they would like to. Um, and so. You know, they're weaponizing the, the Johnny, Department of coming? Justice. Matthew, Matthew, uh, listen, I, I disagree. I mean, this is, again, some of the Republican talking points. The weaponization of the criminal justice system against Trump. No, these are, these are, Has these are infractions that he... Has it not been used these against These are infractions, black these are indictments um, that are connected to... Thank you. Um, it's the same thing. The um, Department of Justice has been weaponized um, against Donald Trump and um, Joe Biden's political opponents. And to, to think that that's something that's, you know, not possible or, or, you know, not reasonable, all you have to do is look at how it's been weaponized against the black community um, by Democrats, <laughs> might I add. You look at the crime bill, the infamous crime bill that uh, Bill Clinton uh, promoted and signed into law that decimated the black family, that Joe Biden touted and promoted and advocated. These are the things the, the, um, the Democrats are known for. They're well known for the, uh, the birth of the, the Ku Klux Klan, the facilitation of it, the administration of it, the terror, the um, uh, policy of terror, and um, as well as the slave owners, the owners of people and, and, and slaves. This is what spurred the party okay, of but Lincoln. John, just come in about that point about lawfare and how the uh, Department of Justice has been weaponized against black people. Absolutely. So, Matthew, if you repeat a lie often enough, it is it appears as the truth. And this is what's happened with Donald Trump. He has repeatedly said that this is a weaponization of the justice system, and his Republican surrogates are repeating the same message. The fact of the matter is, this man has 
potentially violated laws in four different jurisdictions in New York and Georgia, where I live. President Trump is on record of interfering with the election in Georgia, which is a felony. He also has held on to documents well, that he should say have on returned. record, but you say on record, but there's no conviction yet. So well, I think that's, it was a, it was no, that's overstating it. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. It, it, it's a tape recorded request of the secretary of state in Georgia to find 11,800 plus votes so that he can win the election in Georgia. Uh, let's just pause for a minute and listen to some rather uh, prominent Democrat celebrities and politicians. And then I want to ask you your reaction to those, OK? So let's start with the uh, New York governor, Kathy Hochul. Right now we have, you know, young black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word a computer is. They, they don't know. They don't know these things. He's hosting a rally to try to con people and try to fleece them out of every dollar that they have to fund his own legal fees. And by the way, he's doing it in the South Bronx not to make a point, but because he's got court. And the man practically has the legal version of an ankle bracelet around him, and he can't leave the five boroughs because he always has to be in court. And so it is truly an embarrassment to him and I am looking forward to the response of everyday Bronxites talking about how they feel about him coming to their back. When Trump ran in 2016, it was like a joke. This buffoon running for president. No, never could happen. We'd forgotten the lessons of history that showed us other clowns who weren't taken seriously until they became vicious dictators. With Trump, we have a second chance. And no one is laughing now. You're washed we're up. We're trying to You're do it the You're washed up. up. We're, we're, in a gen we're trying to be gentlemen in this world, the You're Democrats. Up. You are gangsters. You are gangsters. Terrence, when you hear a prominent Democrat voices speaking like that to Trump supporters, uh, how do you feel? Well, it's very sad. Again, that's just part of their blueprint. Um, they attack anything that goes beyond the the norm, uh, anyone who's willing to color outside the lines, um, that's who they attack. And unfortunately, uh, people buy into that. But I think what's really great now is that people have awakened. They, again, they are living the reality every day. They know that with this current administration and the previous administration, it's a night and day kind of a thing. So regardless of what they try to say, they know that people that are living day-to-day -day life here in America uh, those people are living the truth. They are living witnesses of what their current reality is. And so, so they can say whatever they want, but at the, at the end of the day, people have awakened and they realize that with this administration and the previous administration, it's a night and day situation and their lives were much better in the previous. Mark, you helped set up the Black Lives Matter in Rhode Island. And when you listen to Democrats talking like that, is, was that part of the reason why you, you turned away from the Democrats? Absolutely. It's the duplicity. And I, and I say it all the time. It's the hypocrisy. And it's the same, the same you know, um, left-wing group of politicians, um, media outlets, and, 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 you know, pundits who hoisted me, you know, and, and, and hoisted, you know, my name and my platform <clears throat> that turned on me when I supported Trump publicly, tried to discredit me and, and trash me and, 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 and make my name taste like you know what. Um, it's the same people. I'm the same person with the same passions, the same motives, the same desires. But because I'm not aligned with their, you know, political, you know, respective mm. nuances and ideologies, because I'm an independent thinker, they try to throw me under the bus. And that is when I saw that. And I kid you not, it was an eye opener for me, unlike I had ever seen before the cult mentality. And, you know, I say that is, you know, you know, there's no the, the, the most racist people in the, in the country are are um, black liberals and white liberals. John, and, black and liberals are the are the most racist people in the country. Yeah, as well as white liberals. No, I don't agree with that. Um, you know, the progressive left um, may um, be um, out there in terms of some of their language and certain, some some of their beliefs, but for the most part, uh, most Democrats are are inclusive. Our, our coalition of supporters is incredibly diverse, much more so than 
uh, the Republican Party. So I, I completely disagree. Uh, do you, do you with accept the they're patronizing comment. towards black people and Hispanic people? Uh, do you accept that they take them for granted, take their support for granted? There's a grain of truth to that. Um, when you have people who consistently, that is true. Uh, who are loyal, um, there can be a degree of, of taking for granted. Uh, I will say that um, the fire is being lit uh, under the Democratic establishment and the leadership, and I think that there'll be an even greater response and a lot more intentionality in terms of a much stronger platform that will address the specific needs of the black and brown communities of America. So I give uh, I give a little bit of an olive grant of a belief uh, credence to what uh, your guest is saying. There is a degree of patronization, but I think Democrats can do a lot better. John Eves will take the olive branch. Thank you so much. Terrace Todd and Mark Fisher, too. Thank you all for your contributions. Much appreciated. And thank you at home and on your phones for watching. If you want to see this episode of Nexus or any of our previous ones, do go to our channel on YouTube. Just type in TRT World Nexus. Till next week, then, goodbye. <laughs>